Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt. We're back at Serato's Unscripted. And today we're doing it from downtown Los Angeles. Um, it's a pretty special edition. We got a legendary uh, producer, Grammy Award winning producer, one of my favorite producers. A freaking goat, really. <laughs> we got DJ Khalil here with us. Uh, DJ Khalil, Thank you, man. welcome. Man, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm man. glad to be here. I've watched the, you know, I've watched this before and it's dope to be on here. Oh, you have? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, great to have you here, man. We got the, the Serato Studio 2.0 Remix competition, which you're going to help judge today. Um, I'm just going to let people know about what that is in case you're watching and you don't know. But basically, um, Khalil's going to judge a bunch of the beats that were submitted to our Discord channel using samples that we provided. And we're going to give the winners, well, we're going to give three people a chance to win three different prizes. The Universal Audio Apollo X4 Heritage Edition will go to the winner of the champion. Number two gets the Archeria V Collection 9 Software Instrument Bundle. And number three gets the Waves Horizon Plugin Bundle, which is pretty wild. That's crazy. Like, all those things are insanely fire. Um, now, there is one thing to note, though. The Universal Audio Apollo is only available to the people that entered in the U.S., um, so if you didn't, if you're not a U.S.-based person, we can't get that to you. But thank you for the folks that entered, that did put their location in there, and make sure, make sure that if you win, that you can get that. Uh, but thank you to everyone who who submitted these beats. There's like so much fire in the kit in the in the Discord, um, and we're excited to play it for you all um, a little bit later. But first, I want to talk to to Khalil about some of his incredible productions, a bit about your history. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let's, so so let's get right into it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is your Grammy Award winning. Um, oh, yeah. Con congratulations on Thank the Kendrick, you. man. Thank you, man. It's, uh, it's incredible. I mean, you know, another, like, best rap album. You know, when, like, this is, like, my third one, two times with Eminem, now with Kendrick. And, you know, I I, <clears throat> I had a song on Good Kid, Mad City that was, like, on the, like, Target version, like, the deluxe Target version. It wasn't on the official, you know what I mean? So to be link with Kendrick again is incredible and like you know I just know him through working with Dre and working on Detox like we have some records together that we did so you know I built a relationship over the years so you know congrats to Kendrick you know just an incredible body of work you know what I mean like, absolutely literally, so I'm, I'm just proud to be a part of it and shout out to Soundwave too yeah so, yeah. yeah who I did the, the track with and Jay Pounds yeah man I gotta say though like Purple Hearts is literally my favorite song on that album <laughs> And it's so crazy because you got Ghostface on there and you Dude. got Summer Walker on there too. Crazy. And like everybody is just like at 10, you know? Like, yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's just funny because like over the pandemic, I learned, I learned like this match for, I learned this like core generator and I used that to make the sample for the record. You know what I mean? So I literally taught myself something over the pandemic that actually like paid off. You know what I mean? Wow. Which was pretty insane because I was like, you know, I always had musicians and I could play a little bit, you know what I mean? But like to have, to learn this software and then I, you know, made these start making samples on my own. That was like the first one that was like, yo, I got this one off. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's on a cool. major album. So it was, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. And, and tell me like, did you, when you made the beat, like, like how, how did you get that to Kendrick if you don't want me asking? Through Soundwave. I mean, I, I, when I was, it's funny because during the pandemic, we were all on our phones, all on Instagram, you know what I mean? And I was posting because I was learning this this software in Ableton, like it should, you know, it was it was like I was just posting it, you know what I mean? I was I would post like some of the things I was doing, and like everybody from like no idea, they're like, "What are you doing?" Like I use, you know, we all use the same thing. What are you using? And so you know, I would have these conversations, these DMs. So like Soundwave hit me up, and he was like, "Yo, like this is incredible. Like, do you have more?" And I was like, "Oh, I have." To, I was making like folders, so I just started sending him stuff, and then you know. I got a, a, he hit me up and he was like, yo, I need the files for this one, which was, it was, I think the file was called Isley's. It was supposed to be like an Isley Brothers, you know, that's what it reminded me of at first. And then, so I sent it to him and then didn't hear anything for a minute. And then like, he hit me back. He was like, yo, you know, I think, you know, Kendrick's going to jump on this. Oh, wow. And he was like, you know, and, and if you hear the sample, like even the drums, the whole groove is like, you know what I mean? They just kind of, they really beefed it up and added their, you know, flavor to it, but you know what I mean? The full composition is like literally, you know, what I did literally on my laptop. Just wow. like, you know what I mean? With my kids jumping around behind me. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it, it's, you know, shout out to Soundwave. You know what I mean? He was obviously like Kendrick's right hand, you know, yeah. he, you know, he for playing it for him. And 
you know, it really just hit me back and, you know, just to be a part of it. So it was really through Soundwave, like how it happened. That's crazy. awesome, man. Yeah. Um, what's crazy too is like, yeah, like I said, Ghostface and Summer Walker, incredible artists. Yeah. Uh, I'm a huge person. Personally, Ghostface like my favorite. Yeah. Cool gang <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, this is so crazy. Um, and and hearing him on your track, man, like, are you a fan? Like, are you a fan of both those artists? I too? mean, of course. I mean, you know, Summer Walker is one of the biggest artists in the world. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the the whole Love Renaissance movement. Like, we we've, we've known them for like a long time. You know, my camp. So you know for her to be a part of it and her be, being as big as she is and then obviously Ghostface being a legendary he's one of my favorites from from Wu you know him and Ray are like my favorite you know what I mean yeah. so Cuban links yeah exactly yeah, yeah. you know what I mean so um, you know so when, when I when I even saw you know when they told me that who was on the record before it came out I was just I couldn't you know I was like what and I you know I hadn't heard it fully yet you know what I mean so um you know, I kind of heard it like literally when everybody else heard oh, it wow. full, in, in its full, you know, in the as, in terms of like the full song. You know what I mean? So, because it was so hush hush, like you know what I mean. And and you know, at the time, because I had a record on Kanye, I had Hurricane on Kanye's That's album. That's right. With the, uh, who's on that? A uh, weekend on that. The weekend, weekend. and um, Little Baby. Wow. And that that was you know, and that was around the same time. So we were getting, you know, you're getting all these fake like text messages like, yo, this is Kanye. I need files for blah, blah, blah. This is, you know what I mean? Really? Like, and, oh, yeah. And so, you know, when Kendrick's, when, you know, people are starting to see that Kendrick's about to drop, you know, I'm getting all these like fake emails and yo, you know what I mean? So Kendrick's manager finally called me, you know what I mean? I was like making sure like, is this really you? You know, is this really you, Anthony? <laughs> you know what I mean? And and he was like, no, this is, this is for real. This is for real. So I was like, okay, cool. But you know, it was, it was crazy, man. People were really like trying to get unreleased music and files. It was insane. Yeah. I feel like that. It was like spam city, a peak pandemic. Everything yeah. was like trying <laughs> was to get some of it. The right? wild west. Yeah. Literally. That's crazy. Now, it's cool to hear like you talking about um, making your own samples, and that's something that I, I'd really like to talk about because just before we, we, we went live, we were just talking about uh, the track you made with Chin and Jetty mm -hmm. called Kind of Like a Big Deal for, uh, for Clips, right? Yep, yep, Clips. And, um, and I remember, you know, that was the first, I remember hearing about how you made that beat, and it was the first time I'd ever heard someone was not using any samples. Yeah. But it sounded incredible like it yeah. sounded so so big and so so expansive um yeah. can you just talk a little bit about how you kind of got into that yeah um yeah i mean really you know it was literally like trial by fire like i you know when i when i worked with g unit on beg for mercy which was like a it sold like what three million copies you know i sampled a group from canada there was like a pro, pro group i can't remember the name of it. i think it was clot two or something like that and they took a hundred percent of my publishing damn you know what I mean? Because I literally just looped what they did. I mean, you know, it was cool what I did, but it was like straight up loop. And my manager at the time told me how much money I lost. You know what I mean? Like how, you know, it was like 150 grand or something crazy. You know what I mean? And that was a huge album to be on, you know? So I was like sick for like two weeks. And then I was just like, I was like, okay, I have to figure out how to get around this. You know what I mean? Because everything I was doing was sample heavy. Mm -hmm. And... I just started teaching myself how to play and making my own sounds. I started buying old keyboards and I just started making, you know, and meeting new musicians, I just started making my own samples. And that kind of like started my whole journey of like, you know, I can actually do this, you know what I mean? And, and when I started placing records with my music, you know, or, you know, whoever I was working with, I was like, I can really do this. I can make a career out of it, you know what I mean? And, and it changed my life, literally. So now, you know, that's a big part of my process is, jam sessions you know um bringing in different like every wednesday i host a jam session oh really yeah I host, and it's just like you know i have different musicians come through and we just make samples and everybody gets their writing and pub and all that you know what i mean so i'm very inclusive on that stuff but it's just really about building a community and like building a, a catalog of music that maybe people will sample 20 years from now you know what i mean and I think that's what the culture has turned into is like everybody's making sample packs and mm -hmm. understanding that. But we were on that way before yeah. that happened. You know what I mean? So like with kind of like a big deal, you know, I work with Chen who's, he plays everything. He plays guitar, he plays bass, 
and we were listening to a lot of like the meters. That was kind of like the inspiration. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, wow, totally. So you know what I mean? So it was like we we're trying to find like dope riffs, like you know, like what something the meters would come up with. And you know, and Chin just start, he's incredible at coming up with that stuff. So we he started playing stuff. I chopped it up, you know. At the time I was using Reason, so I was chopping up in the Rex, you know, Rex uh loop player or whatever. And you know, and just, you know, my drums, my drum game was on a thousand at that point. You know what I mean? So, you know, I was, um, yeah, I just put these loops, percussion loops, and it just, it just, just turned out the way it did. And then when, when Pusha T heard it, he was like, yo, this is crazy. You know what I mean? I didn't even think he would pick it. I just, I had no idea. I just, it was just some raw shit that I wanted to hear. You know what I mean? So, um, and then he came back, and then he had Kanye on it. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, this is going to be the single. I'm like, you're going to make this the single? You know what I mean? And and, um, and it just turned out the way it did. It's like one of people's favorite track. You know what I mean? So shout out to Chin. Shout out to Chin yeah. and Jetty. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out Chin and Jetty. Shout yeah, out the, the Vancouver homies. Yeah. So it's good. It's kind of funny that you say that, too, because you're like, I got sued by this Canadian group, <laughs> yeah. and then I collabed with this Canadian yeah. guy, and it's like, it all worked out. So Canada's on your good books. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but that's crazy, man. Because um, I, I mean, that beat was just really revolutionary at the time, and yeah. uh, and I got I got to give it to Pusha, man. He really knows how to choose a good beat and man, like he's just incredible. Hear that. something that other people maybe don't, right? He, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. He was. I feel like he was looking for something new and fresh, and like, you know, we were just, you know, I, I feel like our whole crew, we were just, we we had, we we were just literally making samples and coming up with a whole new sound at the time and he picked you know i did three three joints on that album you wow know what I mean? so it was that one and and there's two two other ones and you know that was a big you know another big break i feel like every step was just like another big you know what i mean thing but to work with the clips is like one of my favorite groups ever you right. know and push is one of my favorite mcs so um it's just you know it's incredible it's part of history yeah you've worked like pretty much with everybody it seems yeah. like oh, so many of my favorite rappers and like <laughs> artists have songs with you like you work with anderson pot too yeah. right yeah anderson yep yep and yeah i mean on malibu and like that's kind of early my favorite yeah. yeah like got in with him you know i met him when when dre was working on compton that's when i met anderson and we did when compton was done and it, it dropped we did a panel and you know, I was just talking to him, and we're, you know, everybody's about to go their separate ways. He's like, "What are you about to do?" I'm like, "I'm going to the studio." He's like, "Well, I'm coming. Let, let me come through." <laughs> wow. And we did uh, that day. We did "Hard Don't Stand a Chance," like literally, 20 minutes. It was a 20 minute jam session. He Holy jumped. I, I pulled up my V drums. I put the mic on there, just how he would perform it. And I had the musicians, and you know, Dan Seif and, and Sam Barsh, and, and we literally jammed for 20 minutes, and he sang the whole thing down. Oh my gosh. Done. 20 minutes it was done he came back did the second verse and then we just finished it but he was like and that's my mix too like he was like no nah. wow. i was like are we gonna get somebody to mix he's like no nah, what's wrong with your mix <laughs> so we kept his you know we kept my mix and it was just like you know he's incredible i mean he's one of the greatest I mean, he's like he's to me in terms of artistry he's top five yeah I mean, yeah anderson's incredible incredible it so. feels like he just oozes musicianship, right? He does. Like, where he's drumming, he's dancing, he's singing, rapping. Like, it's all incredible. It's, it's incredible. insane. It's, I mean, and it's just, he's such a music head. Like, I, you know, he schools me on music. Like, he's playing me stuff in the studio. I'm like, what is this? You know what I mean? Or I'll play him something. He's like, oh, he's like, I know what that is. You know, like, so he's, that dude is, his knowledge of music is, it goes really deep. And it's just like, things just happen when he's in the studio. I can't, I can't explain it. Every, it just starts coming together. I, I don't, you know, so he's he's got like this this way about creating that. You know, is really inspiring. Like I, f I feel like that's why everybody's just chasing him. Like, when are we getting back in? <laughs> you know, I saw him at the Grammys. I was like, dude. He's like, I know, I know. I'm like, you know. So I see he's DJing now too. Have you yeah, seen that? Yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. I mean, it makes sense. That's what I'm saying. His his knowledge and his what he knows different genres. That dude is a beast. Yeah. He's a beast. Now, speaking of DJing, um, shout out Mona Lisa. Uh, Mona Lisa hit me oh, yeah. up. Legendary. She said to say, what's up, Doc? She said, like, what's make up, sure you say what's up, Doc? And then she was like, you know. That's um, family. Right? And she yeah. was like saying, um, you got to ask Khalil about being a DJ because, you know, it's DJ Khalil. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell me about your DJ background. Man, I mean, it started in like eighth grade. Um, I just remember borrowing. There's a, another kid in my in my homeroom who had he had his own turntables 
and he got in trouble. So he was like, yo, you can borrow my turntables. <laughs> I borrowed them for like a few months, start DJing parties. And like, I was kind of DJing before that, but just like with one turntable and a tape deck. And I just picked it up real fast and started doing parties, gave him his stuff back. And then my parents helped me buy my own equipment. And, um, and really it's just, my, my brother was the first one, my brother Jalal was the first one in our family to start DJing, you know what I mean? And he, you know, when he went away to college, he had a mixer and he had a turntable and I used to just practice on that and I would send him tapes. And, um, and then finally my parents got me two turntables and I just, it just took off from there. And then I just started DJing, I just, you know, just doing parties, weddings and all that. And then I just started getting more high profile gigs. So I did like Benny Medina's birthday party. Wow. You know, with Puffy, Puffy's in the booth with me, <laughs> handing me records, he's going through my crates, you know what I mean? I used to do Will Smith, I used to do all their kids' parties, you know, it would be like Eddie Murphy, the Wayans brothers walking around, um, and I used to do like rush hour premiere parties, you know, and we hosted, every New Year's we would have this big party at my parents' house, so all the kids that were going away to college would come, and we'd all hang out, and it'd be like 500 kids, my kids, at my, at my parents' house. So, and we used to, it would just be crazy. And so, you know, I, 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 it got to a point where I just started hating the music and I just really was really into production and I just kind of left it alone, um, which I kind of regret because I've, you know, because now DJing is such a, A, you can play whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can play whatever you want now. Mm -hmm. It's not as before you had to like play a certain genre, you know, whatever. I think everybody listens to everything now, so. But, you know, I'm slowly getting back in, you know, I'll just, I'll do events here and there. Yeah, from what Mona Lisa said, it sounds like we're all missing out on these DJ <laughs> Khalil sets, you know? Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back for sure. For That's sure. awesome. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of your, your parents, um, this was another thing that, that uh, Mona Lisa and I were talking about and something that I found out. Um, your, your father was, a, was an L.A. Laker. Yeah. A legendary L.A. Laker. Yep, yep. Um, Walt Hazard. Walt Hazard, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. And a Bruin, UCLA Bruin. He was college player of the year, 1964. They went 30-0 and 0 and, you know, um, won the championship that year, senior year, and then he got drafted by the Lakers. They had, like, territorial drafts back then. Oh, draft. okay. So you, he got drafted by the Lakers, and then um, I think from there he got traded to Seattle. And then, then he became an all-star in 67, I think, was Seattle, yeah. So I grew up, you know, around basketball my whole life, you know what I mean? Um, he retired, the year I was born is when he retired. Oh, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, It was the focus on raising a family? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, he was, he's still attached to basketball. Like, he, he coached at Compton College, and he coached at Chapman, and then he, he ended up coaching at UCLA, and he had Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller oh, was wow. one of his players, yeah. So I know Reggie, we, you know, I used to... Um, go all the game we were the ball boys me and my brothers we would be the ball boys at the games and stuff like that so you know my dad was a heavy all his you know friends were musicians so oc smith you know oc smith married my my, my oldest brother and my sister-in-law oh wow yeah and like you know Bi uh, billy Eckstein um and his son ed Eckstein. They, they used to come you know come over and that that was like one of my dad's best friends um my dad knew les mccann he wrote les actually, mccann Actually, on Much Less, he if you look at the liner notes on Much Less, my dad wrote those. No way. Yeah, he wrote the, the liner notes on that. The, um, yeah. Oh, man, Les is, I mean, keyboard player, right? Keyboard yeah, player, yeah. It's insane. I have, like, Montreux, and I have the uh, live at Montreux. I also have the Layers record. Layers, is, that's just, one of my favorite right? of all time, yeah. That wow. album's incredible. That was, someone told me that album was created in three hours. No. Yeah, it was, like, literally, supposedly it was just a jam. He called it, all these musicians in, and they are just, literally just went in and just played whatever came oh my gosh yeah that's, that's incredible yeah that's crazy i guess they had it all like everything just worked out it, right yeah. yeah i was like you yeah. know when you're on that level it's like you know it just comes to you you know what i mean but um but yeah my dad you know was heavily involved in music and you know when, when he first got his job at ucla like um i think mo austin and all these record executives threw my dad like a party like a roast or like a dinner yeah you know what i mean so he's heavily tied into like the music side of things too and bill cosby bill cosby was a good friend of my dad's oh wow yeah yeah i was just saying um <clears throat> i think we were just chatting about earlier i'm i would watch that bill russell documentary on netflix which if you haven't checked out definitely yeah. check it out um and it was cool just to see like a lot of the history and and a lot of the things that have happened throughout that that time it was kind of before our time you know yeah. what i mean yeah uh, <clears throat> and you know i mean 
all, all I know about basketball is really Jordan era, you know, yeah, Magic yeah. Johnson, and it's like obviously a lot different. But yeah, yeah, and you play basketball yourself. Right? Yeah, I yeah. still play. I still play. I mean, that's like literally my exercise every day when I'm not creating or if I'm going through <clears throat> just not feeling creative. That's the that's the thing I turn to is basketball. Mm. I love it. I love it. It's like it gives me, you know. I mean, even we, we talked about this earlier. You know, the principles of basketball I apply to music because I feel like, you know, I, I grew up as a point guard in high school and I feel like as a point guard, you know, you have a team and you have to get the best out of your teammates and it's not really about you. It's about everybody else. If you if you want to win, you know what I mean? And I think those principles I apply to what I do with musicians and writers and it's not really about me. It's about, you know, us making something great, you know what I mean? Or achieving something great. So, you know, my dad was a point guard and I feel like, you know, and, and he, he was coached by John Wooden and a lot of those principles and the pyramid of success was a big part of my upbringing, literally. So, you know, I really try to stay connected through basketball and music because it really, it's like hand in hand for me. It's like literally the same, same thing. Absolutely. And it's really lovely to hear you talk about um, like being a team player and, you know, as a producer, you know, the role of a, of a, of a beat maker or a producer is, is such a supporting role a lot of the time, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it is kind of like in a little way, like you're stepping back and, and allowing a platform for an artist to shine. Yep. I, I, I don't I don't know if people really see it that way all the time necessarily, but I think it's really, it's, it says a lot about you too, because when I first started coming to LA and I started, you know, working at Serato, I'd meet people and they'd always yeah. say, oh, you Khalil, he's the he's the god. You know, he's That's the crazy. he's the one that we all yeah. learn from, and um, and it's really cool, to, you know, to see it, to see you know, to see you get the, the flowers too. You know, your yeah. awards and all that are recognized because uh, you know, yeah, you're a very kind of low key behind yeah. the scenes kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just you know, that's just a part of my personality. But you know, I'm I'm very focused. Like you know, when I'm making music and trying to just make the best product. You know what I mean? I, I'm, you know, but. but uh, Dan Seif, who I've collaborated with like literally my whole career, he 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 laughs at me because he's like, he witnesses all the things that happen in the studio mm -hmm. that I don't pay attention to, you know what I mean? Because I'm so focused on like, what what's happening, you know, musically, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's like, I'm you know I love it, man. I love what I do, and I'm really, I know what I want to hear, and I know what I want to accomplish. So it's I was like laser sharp focused when it comes to just getting in the studio and getting the best product possible you know what i mean absolutely now i'd like to take a moment just to to, to rewind a little bit because mm -hmm. um a couple of people hit me up when they were like oh, are you going to be talking to khalil you got to talk about south scientific man and oh, like yeah. db was like you got this is my favorite record <laughs> let me pull it out db was like you gotta you gotta tell me about this record it's my favorite record um Return. self scientific that's what he said he said degrees oh degrees yeah oh yeah he's like i found this vinyl in my stash from 97. yep so, That's funny. Yeah, tell me about science, self scientific. It's you and Chase Infinite, right? Yeah. So Chase, Chase Infinite is like my best friend. Like he's literally a brother. You know what I mean? He's like, um, and we met in eighth grade, and at basketball camp, and he was one of the top point guards in our age group, and I was trying to get to that that level. You know what I mean? So we competed against each other, and then we went to kind of like rival high schools. He went to Canoga Park. I went to North Hollywood. And he was rapping. I had just started making beats in 10th grade. So we would meet before, you know, because we were friends, we would meet before. I'm like, yo, listen to this beat. And he was like, yo, I just wrote this rhyme. And that's how we kind of started. And then we, we had a friend named Frank who he had his own studio. And we used to go over there and we cut our first demo. Ended up getting a demo deal with Loud. Um, we were on like a sampler. It's funny, Just Blaze always hounds me about this sampler. <laughs> but we were on there with like Mob Deep and Wu Tang, you know what I mean? Yeah, Cellar Dwellers. Records. Okay, I got you. And it was like a big deal for us, you know what I mean? And uh, we had never, we had never ended up getting signed, you know what I mean? But Chase's cousin, Bigger B, um, rest in peace, like he's the one that kind of like tried to put us on and, and you know, and he was, he was a big supporter. So, you know, we started our own company and then we put our first album out in 2001. And, um, and you know, and me and Chase have just, you know, I mean, to this day, we, we're still working on Self Scientific. It's like our baby. It's like literally like we can do whatever we want. We're not, it's not affected by the industry, the fans. And this is literally for us. It's like therapeutic for us. You know what I mean? So we don't 
drop an album every year or whatever. It's really when we feel like doing it. But we have fans, you know what I mean? Yeah. Our fans, our fans are, are you know, always on us about like, when are you dropping music? So, you know, but but degrees. The funny thing about degrees is that my best friend Ross Sudan. I have another best friend named Ross Sudan. He's the one that produced that. Oh no way! Yeah, he's the one that produced that. Oh, I didn't shit. produce degrees. Um, I did run the depth, which is on side A. But Ross Sudan was like an incredible producer and a rapper. We were trying to put him in so scientific, and and he goes by Jay Tiger. So he ended up rhyming on our first album. But he, you know, he just wasn't really focused at the time on 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 you know being an MC. But he was like Andre 3000 at 15. You know, this dude was incredible. Um, and you know, and that's just kind of like how it all came together. But you know. Those are like, that's like my foundation mm. is so scientific. Like even the musicianship and making samples and all that really kind of started then, oh, honestly. Wow. You know, I mean, I was sampling records, but then I was also replaying stuff and you know what I mean? Using more live instruments because I was super inspired by Dre and Organized Noise and you know what I mean? And like Outkast and Pete Rock Seal Smooth. So it was like a blend of all those things. It's really cool you say that too, because yeah, Dre really kind of, he kind of was one of the pioneers of that, and yeah, organized noise too. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, Dre was really re-interpolating things, right? Yeah, yeah. Organized noise were just kind of like making things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and and now you work with Dre. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that's a story in itself, right? I mean, yeah. Oh my God. Did yeah. he pick you up from the self scientific stuff or? Help? No. Well, the funny thing is, I met Dre when I was thirteen. At my, he and my sister were really good friends, and my parents threw her a birthday party, and he came to my parents' house. And they just kind of took over the house. Chris the Glove was DJing. <clears throat> um, and me and my brother, Jalal, talked to Dre for like 45 minutes. He was just telling us, like, I was like, yo, I want to be a producer like you. And so, you you know, and we, you know, he's telling us his whole story. Fast forward to 2003, 2004, um, I end up working on this demo for this artist named Brooklyn. And I did, you know, I did a bunch of beats. He signed her. And he wanted to keep all the beats. So we, you know, he called all the producers in and he saw me. He was like, yo, he remembered me. Oh, wow. He remembered me and he was like, told the whole story about how I talked to him. All this is crazy. Like, how do you remember that? So maybe, you know, he loved all the beats that I did. So, you know, I just kept giving him more stuff. I was making like eight to 10 beats a day, literally. Cool. And then awesome. I just kept giving him stuff. And then I think you know, maybe three, four months later, he was like, I want to sign you as a producer. And that's when I first heard about Detox. He was like, yo, I'm working on Detox. I'm like, what is that? He's like, that's my next chronic. And I was like, you want me to work on that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. and he's playing me beats. He's like, I'm going to put this on Detox. And he's playing me my own beats. Like, yo, this is crazy. And he just saw something in me. And I was really unpolished, but he kind of, you know what I mean? He, he got it. He saw the vision and like, and how much I loved it, you know what I mean? And and we, he's like, that's on my big brother to this day. I called him on his birthday, you know what I mean? I call, you know, we just Dre talk. Day. Dre Day, yeah. <laughs> February 18th, and, and we just talk, and he's just giving me, you know, after being signed over there, that's how I ended up working with Eminem and 50 and Game and, you know, everything, even Jay-Z. I mean, I, I owe so much to Dre. You yeah, know you know gotta tell us, that, tell everyone the story that you, you told me before. Oh, yeah. You, about how you had the beat. With, that went to Jay. Yeah, so, yeah, I was just giving Dre beats, and, like, I, I was at my peak at this point. Like, I was just giving him just I, – I was definitely giving him heat at that point. And so he picked this one beat. It was, like, a solo sample. He sent us to Jay-Z to write for Detox. Jay-Z calls him back and was like, yo, I did the song, but I'm keeping it from my album. He's like <laughs> – <laughs> I, I gotta have this beat, Dre. You can't. I need this for my album. He had already mastered it. He already mastered Kingdom Come. It was already done, and he he stopped mastering to put this song on the album, and it was Mama I made it. And so then Dre calls me. He's like, "Congratulations, you made Jay Z's album." I'm like, "Wait, what?" He's like, "No, you're on Jay Z's album," and I'm like, "How did that happen?" He t he tells me the whole story. Then he's like, yo, I need the sample information because they're going to be calling me about it. I'm like, Dre, that's not a sample. He's like, wait, no. He's like, for real, dude, give me the sample. <laughs> he's like, I don't want you to get sued. I'm like, no, nah, dude, I'm not. That's that's all. That's Those are all musicians. That's my boy Dante and his wife, Mashika. And he's like, oh, my God. He was like, 
dude, you, you, he's like, you killed that. He's like, I can't believe that. From that point on, I think Dre looked at me like a whole, completely different producer. You know what I mean? Because like, no one was doing that. No one mm-hmm. was bringing in stuff that sound like a sample, but wasn't, you know what I mean? And, and it really sounded authentic. And, um, and it just became like a fan favorite on that album. A lot of people like that, that song. Even people say Mama made it all the time. I don't think they really know the song, but they say Mama made it, you know what I mean? So that, that, that became like a, I mean, that was a huge deal because Game, Doctor's Advocate came out and Kingdom Come like within months of each other. Oh, right, yeah, right, I, I remember that. Doctor's Advocate, yeah. yeah, and that was like huge. So I was on both of those albums. So that was like a huge step in my career. Yeah, that's incredible, man. It's crazy. praised by such a, a legend in the game too, you know? Like, yeah. Wow. No, it's, it's crazy, man. So yeah, shout out to Dr. Dre. That's, that's, that's big brother. Absolutely. I think they're doing a, a Dre Day celebration, actually. Mona Lisa, I think, is doing it this weekend. Oh, dope. And J-Rock and Battle Cat. We've got some man. heavy hitters. Dre's, Dre's, he's, he's the GOAT. That's <laughs> yeah. the real GOAT right there. So um, what would you recommend, like, you, you know, it was really cool to hear you talk about, you know, you didn't make samples. That was something you kind of got into a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Um, and to kind of overcome the barriers that I think a lot of people may, may feel like they can't do it. Yeah. But how did you kind of overcome that barrier of like, you know, I, I'm just sampling to then get to that next step. Say, I can actually, I'm going to spend the time and learn instruments and, and do that. I mean, I think it's just having the curiosity of getting better. I think, you know, once you understand the business and, you know, you can sample, you know, but you're going to hit roadblocks mm. with that. And I think because I've taught myself, you know, how to play, how to make my own sound, sound design, and work with musicians, it put me in a whole new stratosphere of, of production that a lot of cats didn't get, they didn't break through that ceiling. Yeah. And I think like now at this point I can I can produce for anything. Mm. I can produce for any genre because you could play me a record and I can I, I know exactly how to recreate all the sounds on that record. It doesn't matter what. And I've done it time and time again. But it's just practice. And I think I think be, when you and it's also the 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 collaborating part of it because mm. people think you have to sit in a room by yourself mm. and make music and that's not how music is made not great music all the mm. stuff we love whether it's parliament or whether it's whatever it is you know what i mean we're, it was cre- it was created in a room full of people and musicians and there was one producer you know what i mean when you talk about quincy jones and we talk about michael jackson some of the greatest music that's ever you know what i mean being created was done with people and collab in, in collaboration with each other so you can't you can get so far by yourself but I think that when you bring all these different people in with their own perspectives their own view their own emotions and they bring something special to what you do your music goes through the roof and that and that's really literally what's happened for my career like I was cool sampling and then I hit that roadblock and it was like, am I going to break through? Or am I going to stay right here? And mm. I was like, you know what? Let me just try it. What do, what do I have to lose? And then when I when I first placed my first, like, something that I played, which was I'll Still Kill, 50 Cent, featuring Akon, that's all me playing. Oh, well. And when I, when I did that, I was like, oh, I can do this. You know what I mean? And it's really like, you just don't limit yourself. I think it's, you know, it's really just understanding that like there's so much more to learn you know what i mean i'm still learning you know i I don't know everything you know but i love music and learning new things and understanding like how these chord progressions work and why you know are people you know and then you start learning like damn these songs are similar yeah dude. you know what i mean these structures are similar but they're just colored differently you know they're expressed differently so it's like you know it's one of those things that like once once that that light bulb goes off you know you're just like man what else what else can i find out you know what i'm saying so it's just being open to it it's, it's really about being open working with people that are like-minded that see the vision that you see and like and and really having your team being fair um all those things play a part in like you know how far you can take it yeah, I, I think that's really cool to hear how you talk about understanding publishing and, and making sure that stuff's kind of covered up front. And then I love this co- this concept of collaboration because, yeah, some of the best things always happen when you're collaborating with people and you and you learn a lot through that process, mm-hmm. things you may not understand as deeply as another person. And then you're also able to 
give perspective and context from, you know, I think that's the cool thing about a lot of the, the thing I like about your music is it has a very hip hop approach mm -hmm. and you can hear that you're obviously really receptive to other uh, genres and sounds like, you know, you did the highest Coyote, Coyote yeah. remix and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And you can tell that you obviously love music yes. of all kinds yeah. and it all, and that's kind of the beauty of hip hop, right? Because it is a conglomeration of like all of these all different, these different things. Stuff, yeah. I mean, I think it's just, I think even being a DJ and just studying music, right? Because we play, we internalize everything that we're playing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So as we've played over the years, I mean, even just becoming a producer, starting DJing, you know, so all my favorite producers were DJs. Mm. Dre, Premier, <laughs> you know what I mean? Pete Rock. So, but I think it's like you, you're internalizing all these records that you're listening to. You're internalizing those melodies, all those things, and you apply it to what, you, what you're making. You know what I mean? And you hear melody because you're listening to so much music, you know, that that really helps you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It really helps you, you know what I'm saying? So it, it helps you become a better creative and, you know, you can express better. So now when I'm playing, I'm, I'm in the jam sessions and I'm, I'm playing with the musicians and I'm figuring it out. I couldn't do that 10 years ago. Right. You know what it's I mean? It's developing the ear though, it's right? It's developing the ear. Yeah. But it's just practicing and falling on your face and being like, man, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but let me just keep trying it. You know, but I think it's just a natural curiosity of just like getting better and understanding like, man, you know, there's so much more that I have, you know, that I have to learn. You know what I mean? And like, you know, that's I, I love watching Quincy Jones or George Clinton or people that have made some of the most iconic records ever because I want to know how they did it. Totally. How are, how are these records still living 40 years after, 50 years after? You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know what's crazy actually? I was I was just randomly looked up Michael Jackson Thriller uh, and wanted to read the Wikipedia page. I do this sometimes just yeah. to like get some context about a record that I love. Yeah. And it was really interesting to hear that this this wasn't like it wasn't really an attempt to be a smash hit pop record. He yeah. wanted he wanted to be he wanted to be successful, obviously. Yeah. But the the topics and the subject matter that he was writing songs about were really not very traditional. They yeah. were no longer love songs. Yeah. There were songs about paranoia. Yeah. Thriller, you know. Yeah. Billy Jean about a, a you know stalker. You yeah. Know, or, you know all sorts of really interesting subject matters that were and beat it. You know. Yeah. Like, these aren't, nature. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. These aren't songs. These aren't like pop. Like I want to be happy songs. They're like quite uh you know intellectual songs yeah, and yeah. um i mean obviously it's a brilliant album and and so many levels but yeah it was it was fantastic to to learn that you know sometimes just doing some weird stuff really works out it does you know? i mean but it's also having the right people bruce wadeen quincy jones you know what i mean yeah michael jackson who's you know kind of driving the ship but quincy is the he makes the decisions right which is that's what I'm learning. Like the producer makes the decisions. That's what you, you know, that I love that, that, um, that clip of Rick Rubin that was floating around where he's like, you know, I don't know anything about music. I just, you know what I mean? And people were killing him for it, but it's, it's so true that he, he, he is who he is because of the great decisions that he makes. Literally like conceptual and, stuff. And right? that's the most important thing. It's not whether he can play. It's really about like, this sounds great. This is gonna last forever. Right. And some people can, you can make a decision will, that will destroy a record forever. You know what I mean? And that's what I've learned from Dre, you know, watching that Rick Rubin thing, Quincy Jones, it's like their music lives forever, mm. ever. Like, and that's, that's the key, right? It's like, how do you get to that point? You know, then that's, that's what I'm shooting for. That, that's where my curiosity is taking me is like, how do I get better? and making something that's so timeless in that my kids love Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's been dead for I don't know how long, you know what I mean? Yeah. But my son loves Thriller and Bad, that's all he listens to. Yeah. It's crazy, it's yeah. like how does that, <laughs> how does art do that and cross general? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I think you're on your way, dude. Like, you, I mean, like I said, you're yeah, I'm right trying. Right. Yeah. But I love that, I also really love to hear that you talking about these things and you talk about it as a, as a journey, as an ongoing journey of developing and, and understanding. And I think that's one of the, wouldn't you agree that's one kind of the beauty of music? You're never going to like ace it. You're never going to finish the game or never. clock it. It's like it's constantly funny. going. We were talking about, um, you know, we were talking about Dahi, who's a good friend of mine. And Dahi, we were on a panel one time and he was quoting somebody. And I never heard this before, but he was saying there is no destination. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I was like, man, that's true. There is no destination. 
Shout out to DJ Dahi. Yeah, big shout out to DJ Dahi. Um, but, you know, it really resonated. That, that was like a big statement for me because there really is no destination. It's literally just you just keep learning, you get better. You know what I mean? And you have these these moments where I call it like you graduate. You know what I mean? You get that Grammy. You get mm. the platinum album. You get on that big record, you know? But then you got to start all over again. You got to do the next thing. You know what I mean? So it do, it doesn't stop. No. It doesn't stop. You know what I mean? So I don't, you know, and I, I look at Dre, who's made all the money in the world. He's accomplished everything you could accomplish. And he works every day. Yeah. Like every wow. day. Really? And like outworking everybody and still on the t at the top of his game. This dude has not slipped at all. What, yeah, I feel like Jeff is like that too. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. exactly. Another person that's like, you know, you see these I icons jazzy jeff like you know what i mean dr dre like even when i, I used to work with mugs like dj mugs always gets lost in the conversation but i worked with True. mugs you know it, we we had a company with him called angeles records me chasing mugs and i watched mugs work every day he's still cranking it out you know what i mean and yeah. he's and he's had huge pop success he's had he has one of the most iconic groups in hip-hop in music you know what i mean and it's like He's this dude's still working hard. He's still trying to prove something to himself. So that just shows you that there's no destination. That's a really good point, though, man. Um, apart from the destination part, but also that Muggs gets left out a lot of conversation. He gets left out all the time. And Muggs is like, you have the NWA family tree, and then you got Cypress Hill and their family tree. You know what I mean? Alchemist. Terms, Alchemist, exactly. Soul assassins. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, he, he gets left out of the conversation, but he, their impact was just as big as anybody yeah it's a really good point here. you know what i mean and he gets left out the comp but he's one of my other mentors you know what i mean like i had a chance to work with him so it's like you know you got dr dre dj Mo, you know and chase said that in one of our songs we, we were mentored by them wow literally yeah that's some la history really yeah, you like know what the, i mean the foundation really right yeah it's crazy it's cool too i was watching steve lacy's uh interview this morning with nardwar which is fantastic, and um, watch that. it's really good. It's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, you know, Nardwar, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but he was talking too about Sara and like, oh, uh, and, and you know, Taz and and then uh, Thundercat and like all of this other wave. Terrace Martin yep. of LA producers, Dahi, of course. And yep. we were talking about Ricky and THC Axel. Yeah, yeah. And you, we were just talking about how, um, yeah, you you talked to you were what were you saying about when the when a specific album came out that you guys were all oh yeah. On? So yeah, I, I, I was saying like when G Unit Beg for Mercy came out, that was like a big, uh, that was like that kind of, to me introduced the next wave of producers, which was like, you know, before that you had, you know, your Timberland, you had, you know, I think it, it was, you know, your Dre's and all that. But then there was like another crop coming up under it, which was like Jake One, Knotts, you know what I mean? Denon Porter, like, mm. you know, um, I mean, you name it. I mean, you know, it's just high, you know, high tech, you know what I mean? Like you had all these the 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 next wave of producers that were like gonna be taken over. You know, in terms of hip hop and all that. Um, Focus is another one. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you know all, all these dudes that they're like you know my contemporaries. You know, to me, Good Kid, Mad City is the same thing. It was like the landmark album that like introduced like Dahi, THC. You know what I mean? Scoop Deville, like all these dudes that made like an incredible body of work that's you know that thing's still on that album still on the you know 200 you know what I mean? yeah right. 200 yeah and like it's such a landmark moment for la hip-hop but just hip-hop in general because these dudes are on everything now yeah you know what i mean Dai was just up for producer of the year <laughs> yeah, that's you know what crazy, i'm saying which man. is crazy you know so, what i mean so but it's, but he, i mean he deserves it because it's like he you know there was another wave coming and i saw it coming like you know, with THC, I wanted to sign them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and 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 but they we, you know, we're still brothers to this day. I talk to Axel all the time. You know what I mean? Ricky's a good friend of mine, and you know, to see their development and what they've done, and you know, all these dudes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they're these guys have taken over. Yeah. You know. It's fantastic. Hey, um, uh, let's get into the beats now. Um, we got uh, we want to we want to run through these beats. Thank you to everyone who uh, who entered the competition. I'm just going to give a quick rundown of like how it works uh, for anyone who's watching right now. Um, basically, we gave three samples and we put it in the Discord and we got everyone to flip the samples in Serato Studio using the stems function that's just been released. Um, the samples 
Um, I'll just play a snippet of each one of them because they're, they're full songs. But um, one of the first one was Carl Hector, uh, the Malcolms. Mel so Mel Malcolms. Um, not not sure I'm saying that right. Uh, it's Germa's Lament. And is, is this an, is this on Now Again Records? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Now Again yeah. Records. Shout out to Egon and Now Again. sample this is a second sample this is Reginald Garland are we through this is the instrumental version um, and we'll just take that from the top <laughs> Crazy drums, man. Crazy horns. It's like a lot of, a lot of stuff there. <laughs> uh, and this is the third sample, original, also original Garland. Girl, you better hurry. So that, those are the three samples, um, and if you're not familiar with Now Again Records, like Now Again and Egon, what they do, I mean, just an incredible collection of music that's been kind of unearthed from artists that you may not be aware of. I mean, usually I'd never heard of them yeah, personally. Yeah, I, yeah. But no, they're, I find them. <laughs> right? And they're incredible for, for sampling and just listening to, and I know that he's provided a lot of samples for a lot of uh, big records artists, so this is a real treat uh, for you all to flip. And like I said, uh, we're giving away three prizes. The first prize is the Universal Apollo X4 Heritage Edition. Second prize is the Archeria V Collection 9 Software Instrument Bundle. And I use the Archeria plugins the oh, yeah. since all the crazy. time. They got the crazy Mellotron and stuff too. Um, and then the third prize is the Waves Horizon Plugin Bundle. And you already know Waves make incredible plugins. And that's all coming to you from Sweetwater. Uh, so shout out Sweetwater and shout out OP making that happen. Um, and we're only going to be able to ship the, the, Arch the Universal within the United States, but the other ones are, should be okay for international entry entries. The first one um, we're going to play is produced by Malv, and this is uh, his track, Saison. And he said, here's my submission. I played around with all three samples. Had fun with this one. Can't wait to hear what everyone makes. Let's get right into it. Malv. <laughs> Malv. Dope. That was fire. Definitely on the funk tip. Dope. 
Do you have anything you wanted to, to talk about on that one there, Khalil? No, nah, I just love all the different like breakdowns and like just the, um, you know, just, just the overall texture and feel of it. It was dope. Yeah, I really like the bass and the, the hats kind of like, I could hear the hats from the break in there, which is super yeah, dope. Bounce to it. Yeah, nice work uh, produced by Malv. Thank you very much. Um, all right, up next, oh, we've got the homie M Chop from Toronto, Canada. Shout out uh, M Chop. We we know M Chop from the Swirls Kitchen, <laughs> and he's uh he's always tearing shit up. Um, great to see you in here. So uh, thank you for providing the video too. This is a really well produced video, so we're gonna play the video. Let's take it from the top. Big it up. Man, that guy different knows his way around Serato Studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the chops, though, like how you chop up the horns were, and stuff. Yeah, the chops were dope. I mean, the, just from the beginning, it was already, I was like, I was hooked already. You know what I mean? The bounce was dope. The drums, everything was sick. Yeah, big up, M Chop. Thank you. All right, next up, we got NGVA. Um, I, sh I, sh I should have said what, uh, what M Chop said about his, his, his thing first, so... My apologies, M Chop. I just want to say for your beat, he said, Thank you for the opportunity, Serato. I used three instances of the sample, Girl, You Better Hurry. One for the main chops using stems to remove drums. The second instance used to isolate drums to play under my main drums. And the third instance, I, I, I isolated the vocals with stems to play alongside the Are We Through sample that I used for the horns. Hmm. That's dope. Dope. It's a great way to use, I mean, that, that's the thing I don't know about you, but like I love about stems, yeah, you're able to. Grab like this extract bit. stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's. I mean, it, 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 you know, that's a dream for anybody who comes from sampling. You know what I mean? It's like, man, I can remove this vocal now, or I can take this bass line. Like, it's incredible. Yeah, man. Yeah, I love it. So uh, up next, we got NGVA. He said, "Happy Monday, all. Um, it's Wednesday here now, but um, I had a blast with this one. So I used the horn sections of Are We Through, which also has an interesting percussion groove underneath it. So I used that." Used vocals from Girl You Better Hurry throughout the joint as well. Used a few bass notes from Are We Through to create a groove for the song. For the second half of the song, I used ideas from all my ideas that I could not get to work, resampled them, and then reach up them to provide a change. There are horn stabs from Are We Through, vocals from Girl You Better Hurry, and that grimy guitar from Grimma's Lament. Hmm. It's USA based. And thank you for providing the video too. Let's go, NGVA. <laughs>
Knight's work and GVA. Dope. What's your thoughts on that one, Khalil? Dope. I mean, I love the way it started off, like the, you know, just, just the, the, ch the drums, you know, like that's the first thing that popped out was just the drums, the bounce of it, you know what I mean? Like I, I love unquantized drums and just having like something a little off, you yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, it just reminds me of, you know, Dilla and, you know what I mean? Like yeah. some of my favorite producers. Uh, Mad Lib, and you know, so it definitely gave me that that feeling. Yeah, real good swing and right in the pocket there. Yeah, big up NGVA, thank you. All right, next up we have Super Lit. Um, Super Lit said, had so much fun creating this one. I used the bass isolated from one sample as a pluck instrument and the horns from the other. Used the drums from one sample and layered with the Serato drum kit and vocal sample, which is reversed. Also, because of my super powerful graphics card, I was not able to screen record, <laughs> so this is capture from my phone. Hey, I totally get it. Uh, you know, not everyone has a super powerful graphics card, but thank you for providing the YouTube link. Um, so we're gonna go to the YouTube page, just uh, bear with me. Oop, hold tight. Let's bring that back, and hopefully we don't get any ads. Let's go full screen. because I would have given you a just for that bass line alone. I'm a big fan of that slap bass, man. What did you think, Lil? Crazy. When the bass came in, I was like, wait, what? Right? The bass, yeah, the bass took it to another level, for sure. And, like, you know, I like how it created all these different sections, you know what I mean, with the bass. It was like that sample part was, like, kind of, you know, it was, like, repeating, but you changed the bass line under it. It was pretty dope. Yeah, I was really feeling that when that, that descending bass line came yeah, in. Like, yeah, it's all crazy. Right. Um, so next up, oh, first of all, big up, super lit. But next up, we got the the legend DJ Gons up next. DJ Gons is like a, a man. He's a like a champion of the Serato Serato uh, Studio community, and he gives so much every time, 100%. Uh, we love you, Gons. Um, we, if we could give you prizes just for every just for being the coolest dude and always <laughs> being so committed, we would. 
Um, but this, we're going to talk about your beat, and you're going to break, how you broke it down. So you said you used all three samples and what I stemmed out. Regional, regional, regional Garland, I think I've been saying it the wrong the whole time. Yeah, regional. regional Garland, better hurry. Use the main melodic sample chops due to some vocals that stood out and so many nice melodic pieces to chop up. Took the drums out. Carl Hector and the Malcoons. Uh, Germa's Lament, bass instrument. Used a section at 52 seconds and put in keyboard mode to turn it into a bass instrument. That's a fire technique right there. Hmm. I used that a bunch in the Serato sample uh, in Serato Studio. Uh, and then another, another copy of Carl Hector and the Malcoons, Germa's Lament stemmed out just the melody, used a section at 38 seconds as an intro because of the textures it provided with the guitar. And then uh, lastly, Regional Garland, Are We Through Instrumental, stemmed out just the drums, used the drums to isolate a drum break at the 20, 23 second mark, and the drum fill at the 2 minutes and 6 seconds mark. Sounds fire. Let, and, you know, I already know this is going to be fire, so <laughs> let's go Gons. Uh, hey, if, if I gotta say, if you ever want to learn how to use Serato Studio and you don't want to learn it from me or, or one of the guys <laughs> at Serato, Gons has the best channel on YouTube, Serato Studio Gons, and he breaks down live streams every week and stuff, so definitely give him a follow if you're interested in learning more. What did you think of that, Khalil? Dope. I mean, dope. Like, when the drums came in, I didn't know where it was going at first, like the intro, and, all, and then when the... Uh, I can tell, like, it seems like he's using automation or something. Oh, yeah. I, have, I have, I gotta watch your channel because I'm trying to <laughs> learn the automation part of it. But um, when that, when the drums came in, it was like, you know, and everything came out. I was like, oh, okay, this is crazy. This yeah, is man. Sort of yeah, Gons is a master of the automation, and he's really good at the mix. I always really appreciate your mixes, Gons, and like yeah. the way those drums sat there, like just kind of yeah. like slightly behind the beat, really yeah. just, oh, it was yeah. really lovely. Yeah. Super dope. Yeah, big up Gons. Thank you so much, man. Um, all right. Next up, we have Fourth Street Mega. Also, no stranger to these parts. Um, great to see you in here again. Um, Fourth Street Mega said, I used elements from all three samples, but mainly I built the beat around the Grimer's Lament. I separated the drums, horns, guitars for chops. I layered drums on top of the breaks from the sample and added a different sax sample and bass. At around the 118 mark, I used a vocal sample from Girl You Better Hurry, as well as a horn swell from Are We Through. Man, that sounds good. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
up Fourth Street Mega. That was fire, oh, man. That's hard. Right? I definitely yeah. heard like uh, it was really kind of gritty and grimy. I was waiting for Doom Burst on that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's super dark with the, the drums. I don't know. It just I don't, I could I could have kept listening to that for like another ten minutes because I don't know. I was just in it. Like I went to another place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen to it. So, I was. I thought he, he did a really good job of layering all the things, making them kind of make sense together. Yeah. It didn't sound like you had three or four different things. It was like almost like a really yeah. cohesive vibe. Yeah, I don't know how you heard that, like how you arranged it that way. It's pretty pretty crazy. Yeah, great arrangement. And it's yeah. really cool to see that, like in, the, in these videos, like you really get to see like the, the way people the are arranging. Down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another, uh, another regular, Michael Cooper won a lot of Soros Kitchen competitions is here. <laughs> So it's good to see you, and Michael Cooper, yeah, definitely knows his way around Serato Studio. Uh, Michael Cooper Music said, I used also used elements from all three, Grime is a Lament, Pitched Down and Isolated from Melody, and the other samples for vocals and phased out heavy effects filter on horns. Wish I had more time. Can't believe I just saw this today. Cheers. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And uh, there's one thing I know you're good for is like turning around something really quick and making it sound incredible. So <laughs> I, I already know this is going to be fire. Let's go, Michael Cooper. You know what it's hard, I, I find really hard, especially I imagine a lot of people when they're making beats for these things, is to not like go like full beast mode and like try and yeah. put everything at it. Yeah. That's a really great example of like using restraint. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's just it's just open. I mean, I think like once you have the basics, like you have the drum, like as soon as the drums came in, that's the drums I'm you know, it's like if you win me over if your drums are if the swing is crazy and the sounds are dope. It's gonna it's it's gonna work. It doesn't really matter at that point what you put under it, but the space. You know what I mean? People don't use space. Like they just want to pile on everything. Like I had to learn that. The, you know what I mean? Because I I used to make my beats with like, let me throw the kitchen sink in there. You know what I mean? Right. But it's not really about that. You gotta leave space. So that was a great use of space. Yeah. I love that guitar mm -hmm. at the end too, how it came in just all dreamy like it was. Yeah, like, I wanted that. It, it like faded too soon. Like I right? wanted to hear the rest. <laughs> Damn, Michael Cooper, that was hot, hot. Um, now, um, how are you doing so far? Like, you got some, making I, some notes? I, I need, I need like a sheet of paper. Oh, I'm starting to <laughs> no, it's all good, it's all good. I'll, 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 I'll remember some of them. Okay. Um, well, up next, we got uh, Flip a Beat Club homie from Sacramento and Mons Rock. Um, big up, Mons. Always great to see you in here. And um, I'm really stoked to see that you, you threw one in, in the, in the, into this competition. Um, and here's what Mons had to say. Here's another joint using all three samples, the Germa's Lament, Germa's Lament drums, melody from Are We Through, and ran the a cappella from Girl You Better Hurry through stems. Stems is a game changer for reals. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. We definitely <coughs> do too. Let's go Mons Rock.
it was so cool too like like i don't know if you could see it in here but the you know you're doing the performance like i was like looking at your your scenes like there's no sequence you just did that live that was like a performance man like with the sp and everything same it's crazy dude that yeah was, big up mons yeah that was like i don't know it gave me like p rock seal smooth vibes on that one which is like you can't lose you can't lose with that right but Classic. great use of the vocals great use, i mean the bounce the music everything like sick that was yeah big out mons that was awesome man um yeah thank you everyone man these are all this is like crazy high bar heat right here like no how no you, misses how do you choose like, <laughs> um next up we got milo moo from la that's the homie right there milo moo been cooking up all the time um and it's great to see him in here i think you even got two in here so let's go over this first one um he said, uh, peace y'all, I grabbed the bass from Grimer's Lament as well as another instrument in the song. I, gra I got the vocals from Y'all You Better Hurry and extracted a drum roll and some hi-hats from Are We Through. After la layering some bass and guitar, this is what I came up with. Let's go Milo. <laughs> Think of that Khalil dope again drums as soon as the kick I don't know what you guys are doing the your drums but it's been on like a thousand today it's crazy <laughs> it's a high level here it's yeah. crazy man and it's cool Fire. like seeing how they how they do it how like that was almost like a performance too right yeah 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 all the drops and everything yeah, I mean that's I mean that that helps sell a beat, you know what I mean? Just like doing the drops and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Hearing the you know the MC on the on the track, so that helps sell it for sure. Actually, that's I see DBiase's in the chat. DB said that too. He was like a lot DBiase, of the feedback. DBiase, legend, came, right? OG, right there. He was saying to a lot of people when he, he had a constructive feedback for them was like it's really important to make sure you you have variety in the sequence and yeah. you bring things in and out and you yep. make turnarounds. Yeah, really helps like orchestrate. Definitely, you get arrangement. Yeah. All right. Um, so up next, we have Chill Much More. Um, also familiar from around these parts. Peace, peace. Always having difficult difficulties re screen recording. Um, yeah, man, I understand the screen recording. If you're looking for a tip, though, if you have QuickTime on your computer, you can use QuickTime to screen cap. And you can also use the Serato Virtual Audio to send that right to QuickTime. Um, Sure, we got a bit. I think uh, Gon's actually made a video on how to do it. Um, or if not, maybe I need to make one. The actually, short, the shortcut is Shift Command 5. Shift Command 5. Yes. There we go. Um, <laughs> thanks, Destruct. He's also got great tips on his Instagram, too, if you want to follow him already. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, this is what Chill Much More had to say. He used all three samples, starting with both regional garland samples for the vocal chops, stemming vocals, particularly from Girl You Better Hurry, and melodic elements and fills and drum programming supported by Are We Through? Uh, using drums and melodic melodics separately. Side A. Side B, okay, there's two, two parts in here. Side B consists of all three elements replacing melodic elements from Are We Through and bringing the bass and melody from the Germa's Lament sample to the forefront. Internationally based, however, I do have family in, it, in the US. So that's good. If you take this, we'll be able to send that to your family and you, you'll, let's, let's see what you got. Let's see if you got to take it.
Dope. Awesome. Chill much more. Thank you so much. I like the way you programmed the drums on that. Like it wasn't like kind of a typical pattern yeah. with the extra snare in there. It was really nice. Yeah. The sample was dope. I, I mean, I like the arrangement. Like it, it I, I feel like I heard a song over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you know at the A and B section, like it was really dope. Well, well put together in terms of arrangement, like for a song. Yeah, you know absolutely. I really like that. Uh, and, you, and thanks for labeling it and the video. You could see the A side, the B side. It was cool the it's way you, the way you talked about dope. like a forty five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have Tiny. Uh, Tiny always comes with the heat. I'm looking forward to seeing what you cooked up here. Um, I think I got your video. I downloaded your video. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, oh, shoot. Maybe it's in here. Yeah, there we go. Hold tight. Um, all right, so what, what did you have to say here, Tani? He said, hey, hey, here's my flip. I used some parts of the Garland, Girl, You Better Hurry vocals and reharmonized it with new chords I played with addictive keys. I also used some of the brass parts from Are We Through with the drums for my intro. From the Carl, Carl Hector sample, I used the guitar wah-wah sounds. I played a new bass line with the NI Massive and, 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 and an, a layer of the NI Rickenbacker bass. I also made this jump synth thing with Massive. Had a lot of fun making it. Love, love, love. International bass, but also has family in the US. That's, uh, that's awesome, man. Let's get into your video. <laughs> keys hey crazy you know I mean, what's i think what's really interesting too is like hearing all these different like everyone's got the same samples and all the different approaches it's always so inspiring right yeah i, I mean as i was saying i never would have imagined that track you know what i mean but the mix on that was just crispy yeah super ridiculous crispy. the drums everything like that mix is ridiculous that, i mean <laughs> that beat was incredible pretty incredible that's one of the top hey yeah you got points for the killer on that one Tony. uh oh he always comes with it too man um tani's wow. always bringing the, bringing the heat great to see you in here man wow awesome hey um so let's keep it moving up next we have ali one kenobi also a familiar face around these parts um let's see what you had to say here we go i should have given more time to this drawing board classic <laughs> Try to open up a portal leading to Amari Kitchen at the end. I went with the reg regional garlands. I tried to use all tr use all trifecta, drums, bass, melody, and vocals. Bless. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ali Wan Kenobi. Let's see. Thank you for providing the video. Oh, 
love the change ups in that one. Yeah, it's like three three different change ups, like I mean, when those other drums came in, I was like, whoa, what is happening? Like, yeah, <laughs> right. But um, but I like the layering and, like, you know, and the bass line. And I don't know, it was like this major or minor thing happening, you know, in the sample, which was dope. So I, li- I like that, you know, you went back to that, especially on the, the second half, the, yeah. s- the middle section of that beat. Yeah. So, that's big big up, um, Ali Wan Kenobi. That's fire. I really like the griminess crazy. in the front, too. Like, yeah. Yeah, kind of raw shit. It's dope. All right, um, next up we got Nilak the Beat Ninja, um, and he said, uh, my bad, try to get mines done by noon, but literally just finish it, I can feel the, I feel the pain. Um, <laughs> Kicking hi-hat from Gurma's Lament, bass line from Girl You Better Hurry, and the sample chop of Are We Through with horns and guitar isolated. Stock snare and Arturia Lab keys added in the US. Awesome, let's go. It's great to see you here again, Nilak the Beat Ninja. I have not cut corners. He is <laughs> taking a break in the restroom. But yo, let's talk about that that beat real quick. My name is Deshra Khalil. What's good, bro? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that beat. What do you think, man? <laughs> it's dope. I mean, it was dope. Just uh, you know, just I like the drums and the bass line. It was like I was trying to you know figure out where it was going or whatever. And then when the keys came in, it started yeah. to make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as it was going, you know, the arrangement could have been, you know, a little bit better, but it was it was tight. Got you. When you start a beat, like, what's your what's your first step? Drums, drums. Always start, drums. <clears throat> yeah, you always start with the drums, and then you know, obviously, you, you want to find like the main loop and the main thing that you want to feature in the in the beat. You know what I mean? Like whatever the chop is, um, you know, I'll start chopping. But I like chopping two drums. Yeah. Some people like to do it the other way around. Where they do the sample first, yeah, and then add the drums. But yeah, I like to start with drums. That's just where <laughs> I come from. Uh, hey, tag in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Nature. Well, nature's real. Um, <laughs> nature's real. <laughs> um, but yo, thank you uh, very much. Do you like the beat, Ninja? We we covered the feedback here. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, big up, man. We're gonna keep it moving. Um, and uh, yeah, apologies to the. The viewers, you know, life, <laughs> if we're really live, man, that's how we do it. Um, we got another one from Milo Moo up next, so let's run that real quick. Thank you. 
Milo. Nice. Man, I like that heavy bass, man. Yeah, the bass. And then there was like this guitar part that came in for a second. I wish that would have kept going. I don't know. It just like came in for a split second. That was really nice. But yeah, the bass and the drums can't go wrong. Yeah, big up, Milo. You got two in there, so you're up in the stakes a little bit for yourself. I like that. That's a good hustle right there. <laughs> um, and we got we got the <clears> one <throat> and only up next. We got the one and only Mr. Sonny James, who's also wow. running the boards. He's behind the scenes right now, right here, making shit happen for us all. I love the, the he's straight to it with the description too. There's there's no messing around here. He said, "Here's some shit." <laughs> <laughs> And I love it. Keeps it raw. Let's go to YouTube. Let's hope I don't get the ads. Oh, hold tight. Let's go, Sonny James. James. Let me get those drums. Let me get those drums, Sonny James. Come on, man. Holding out. I need those drums. Extra points for cooking that up, I think, this morning. Is that right, Sonny? Yeah, while we were setting up. While yeah. we were setting up. Well, he did it during the Multitasking. Crazy. I need those drums, though. Got you, bro. <laughs> so I think, I think that's about it. Oh, we got a couple more... Um, Last minute subs to submissions here from uh, Mons and Clothier, Clothier, Clothier. I, I don't know if I'm meant to be saying it like French or, or just American style. Um, <laughs> but we're going to play another one from Mons here. Uh, Flip a beat club, Sacramento in the house. Thank you for sending this through. Let's go. Number two from Mons. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs>
grimy. Yeah. One of the grimiest stuff. Yeah, yeah. The drums is raw. Very raw. Man, how are you feeling? Good. You got you got some. I, I don't know if I remember everybody's <laughs> name, but I do remember <laughs> there. There's definitely some standouts for sure. Okay, I can do a little, a, like a little clip of each if you need to okay. to review it. Um, we have one more though from Claudier. Um, last minute, and this one, uh, he's from, uh, Claudier's from Germany, uh, and he said, I'm way too late, here's the last second thingy, short, super simple, and badly mixed, but it's a little vibe. The clip is a, a clip is a before mix, the track is the finished stuff. Let's play the, fin the finished stuff without the video, um, and he, he said he also used a little bit of machine effects for excitement. So let's get right into it, Claudier from Germany. Yeah, that was fire. I really liked it when those drums hit with that bass. It was really Dope. like, yeah, almost, if you don't mind me saying, and you know, I know comparison is the Thief of Joy, but it kind of had an Eric Sermon vibe a little yeah, bit. There, it right? did. Yeah, it did. It did. Anyways, um, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for, for submitting. Khalil, do you want to maybe review any of the, go over any of the particular beats? Um, I think there's so many. Um, I mean, I think I, I think, you know, in my head, I, I, there's my favorites that stood out. You know what I mean? Um, but maybe, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think you know, I, I think it's just, I think I have my one and two. I don't know if I have my. My three? Okay. My, third, my three yet. Is there any the, any particular ones that you wanted to, to, to re-up re here? Um, Little Dave just submitted. Little Dave submitted. Last uh, minute. Coming in at the clutch. <laughs> Coming to the clutch. Buzz it, Peter. You're getting the video uploaded too. So we're gonna do one more. I guess we got a little bit more time. Okay. Let's go, little Dave from Philly. The one and only little Dave. Big fan of little Dave over here. Um, Ill Vibe Collective too, I believe. So let's go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, that was lovely, that was Dave. Tough. Donuts vibe strong with that one. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Yo, thank you, little Dave. Um, so, Khalil, shall we just play a, a, the top, the snippet of each of each one? Yeah. Right now. All right. Yeah, that'd be cool. So the first one we had in was from, uh, produced by Malv. <laughs> I should be like you, Mel. So that's produced by Malv. Then we have M Chop from Toronto, Canada. Music to a job. I want everybody to clap your hands. We had NGVA. This is uh, NGVA. We had uh, Super Lit with the We Fly. Super lit. Super lit, right. Yeah. Then we had DJ Gons, the one and only, the legend, DJ Gons. Mega. Let's just play the Cooper, the last minute buzzer beater. <laughs> Rock's first one. It's pretty wild. <laughs> Milo Moo's flip, number one. <laughs> 
People use that snare roll. It kind of reminds me of uh, clones by the Roots. Clones, you know? that's right. Right. Um, so yeah, and then next we had "Chill Much More." God, you Unfortunately, is uh, not eligible for winning. <laughs> hey, don't play that. Sorry, I'm Sonny. trying to sneak in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> my bad, Sonny. Um, we had Mon's second one. Oh, sorry. We had Claudia, and then we had one more from little from little Dave. So this is Claudia's joint. <laughs> We had uh, little Dave, who we got the video now, but let's just run it back. <laughs> I think 
that's about it. Khalil, have you have you got your top three? I've got my top three. Okay. <laughs> Let's go third place first. Third place, <clears throat> uh, Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper takes number three. Michael, Michael Cooper. Cooper. Congratulations. Congratulations, Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper, this is what you're going to win. You will be receiving, where is it, the Waves Horizon plug-in bundle from Sweetwater Music. Uh, all the way to you and Houston, not to blow up your spot, but H-Town, much love. So big up, Michael Cooper, number taking third spot. Khalil, tell me, who's got number two? Number two is Mons, Mons Rock. Ooh. Mons Rock, first beat or second beat? The first beat. The first beat. Mons, you got Mons. number two, buddy. Congratulations. Beat club. Yeah. So coming to Mons Rock is the Archeria V Collection 9 Software Instrument Bundle, which you all know is going to be great. So big up Flipper B Club, big up Mons Rock and Sacramento. Um, now, number one spot. <laughs> number one spot goes to goes to Tani. Tani. Yes. Tani. Hey. Incredible. Big up Tani. Congratulations. So Tani, you are getting the Universal Audio Apollo X4 Heritage Edition sent Man. to your family in the United States because we're not sent to Germany. <laughs> So please get in touch with us. Um, oh, we'll get in touch with you, I guess, one way or another, and we're going to figure out where to send that. But huge congratulations to all the winners. This is massive. Big up DJ Khalil. Man, yeah. thank you, man. Hell yeah. We've got the legend here. <laughs> and can we, can we sneak? Can we let people know that there's something special on its way from DJ Khalil for all the Serato users? users? Yeah, I got a, a sound pack coming up. Coming, coming up. up, coming soon. Okay. Um, all you know, new drum sounds, new textures, all that stuff. So I've been working on it awesome. pretty, pretty hard. So it's gonna be crazy. So yeah, so keep that on the low because it's kind of a new information there coming yeah. soon. <laughs> Might have got myself in trouble there, but it was. It seemed like the right time. Yeah, we we'll got um, we got also a bunch of cool stuff coming up um, on the kitchen as well. Tomorrow we've got Imano Mari in the Serato's kitchen. So um, yeah, stick around. If you're not part of our Discord community, tap in. You can type exclamation Discord. In the chat, you can also follow DJ Khalil on Instagram. Just type in ex exclamation point follow if you're watching on Twitch, and it'll pull up his Instagram. Highly recommend following Khalil on Instagram. Um, and yeah, check out his music. Like, it's all heat. It's insane. <laughs> He's produced for everybody. Uh, it's, it's, it's insane. Um, and thank you so much to everyone in the chat. Let's give a couple shout outs. Uh, of course, big shout out to Derek DeMaio, aka Destruct, <laughs> Mr. Sonny James holding us down, everyone in HQ in New Zealand. Um, we got all the people that submitted beats, shout out to everyone who submitted incredible, incredible beats, and all the homies um, that tuned in. We got Jerris. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Any Creations, thank you for making the save emote. Um, little Dave, Lani, uh, Monsieur Claudier, M Chop, Tani, uh, DiBiase, of course. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for being here, and uh, we'll be back, like I said, tomorrow, uh, which is Thursday, I believe, at 10.30 a.m. with Emano Mari. So keep it locked, right. and um, yeah, see you soon. Peace. 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 <laughs> <laughs>